Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Easy 11 Plus live lesson. It's wonderful to have you back and it's wonderful to have you here for the first time, if you are indeed here for the first time. This week we're looking at written comprehension and what I thought we'd do is we'll actually carry on with the worksheet from last time. Um, because a lot of people seem to find that useful. I've had lots of contact about it since from people talking about their answers um, and so on and saying it was valuable. So I thought rather than leaving it there, we carry on, do the rest of the exercise um, so that people get the maximum amount of learning about these basic comprehension skills that we're covering. That's a bit waffly today. Hello, comments starting to turn up. Um, so uh, really good to see some of you mentioning some names. Mahatin, Yatath, I see you're back. Amanda, the newbie noobs. Hello, newbie noobs. Um, Subomi, Anoop, Pratyusha, um, Gregor, um, 11 Plus Master, Hali, lots, lots of names I recommend, some people there who've uh, won um, pens for really excellent contributions over the last few weeks as well. So don't forget there is some easy 11 Plus merch, 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 merch that I'm dishing out to people who contribute good things in lessons or at really good comments under videos. Um, Okay, anyway, enough of that waffle. Let's get started with this. So we've been looking at um, this text here, and previously we did questions one to six. So we're gonna start with question seven, and I've got the question set up here. Um, and question seven says, using your own words as far as possible, explain how we know that the neighbors are wicked and cruel. So when you get a question that invites you to use your own words, the first thing you should do is underline that. If you see this phrase, own words, it's really crucial. Now an own words question is a special kind of question. Do not see a phrase like use your own words and think, oh, la di da di da what's the actual question? Okay, we need to say why the neighbors are wicked and cruel. No, own words is absolutely crucial. If you don't understand what that means, you will lose most of the marks. So, own words for a start means that you're not going to get marks for copying down phrases from the text. You have to use different words, okay? That much should be obvious, but you'd be amazed how many people get that wrong. Um, but what a lot of people do that's wrong is they just take a phrase from the passage and they just switch each word around, okay? So, for example, rather than wicked and cruel, they might write nasty and unkind. But by doing that, they often miss the overall meaning or they write a kind of nonsense. The point of own words question is that you imagine a friend of yours sitting across a desk and you find a simple, ordinary, clear way to explain the same ideas, not necessarily translating them word for word. And that's what you need to aim to do. You also need to make sure that you get all the main ideas from the text. Now, um, I was thinking about this a little bit before the lesson, I do occasionally do a bit of planning, and I thought that rather than just writing out the answer fresh here, if we go to the uh, answer that I already had in the um, in the book that this comes from, I actually set out the stages of thinking through, thinking through this question very thoroughly. So rather than writing a new answer here, I'm going to go scroll the way down to there, whiz through my example answers down to question seven, and I thought I might just talk about this a little bit. So there's an example answer at the top here, but um, let's focus on how I get there. So using your own words means you need to give all the most important information, okay, but without copying the passage. That's basically what I just said. It really should be because this is me too, just writing rather than talking. Um, and what I try to teach here, and this comes up in lots of my books and lots of my resources, like in 11 Plus Lifeline, see the links underneath the video if you want to know about my books and resources and so on. Um, I try to teach a really simple process for an own words question. Now this process may look really complicated, but when you're actually in an exam, you don't write out all this stuff. Once you know how to do this stuff, you just kind of do it in your head. So the first thing you need to do is go through the text and underline the ideas in the passage that answer the question. So the question here is, we need to say how we know from the text that the neighbors are wicked and cruel. So we need to look for evidence of them being wicked and cruel. And the question says that this will be round about line 22. Okay, so we go to this area around line 22 and I've just copied out that part of the text here. So we go through it and we look for things to do with them being wicked and cruel. Next door to this good old couple, there lived another old man and his wife who were both wicked and cruel. So wicked and cruel, that isn't useful for us because that is the quote in the question. And one thing that we won't get marks for is repeating the question, whether in our own words or not. The question is why are they wicked or cruel? Or how do we know that they're wicked and cruel? So they hated their good neighbors and the dog Shiro with all their might. So the key information here 
under, as I've underlined, is that they hated their good neighbours and the dog Shira. So that's evidence of them being wicked and cruel. It doesn't prove it, so you could be a good person who hates somebody because they are evil, so that's possible. But often hating people is a good sign of somebody not being a nice person because hatred is very rarely a constructive emotion from, you know, nice people. And certainly in the text here, it's a clue. Whenever Shiro happened to look into their kitchen, so we'll come back to why I've underlined that, they at once kicked him or threw something at him. So then kicking Shiro or throwing something at him is evidence of them being wicked and cruel. But what makes this particularly wicked and cruel is that they don't do this because he, I don't know, attacks them or, you know, um, pees in their flower beds. They do this because he does something as harmless as looking into their kitchen. So he looks into their kitchen and they kick him and throw things at him. And that is nasty person behavior, okay? He doesn't even go into their kitchen, he just looks. And sometimes they even wound him. So those are the key bits of information in the text um, that show these neighbors being wicked and cruel. But these bits of information are not in our own words. Obviously, they're in the text. We've underlined them. They are in the words of the author. So we found the key information, but we need to turn it into our own words as though we're explaining to a friend and put these ideas together in a way that makes logical sense. Um, so the first thing we need to do, oh, someone's saying, uh, Tinuola saying, sorry, they're late. Now it's fantastic that you're here. Thank you for coming. No need to apologize. You can always rewind, by the way. You won't be quite live. Uh, you'll be a few minutes behind, but then you catch it from the beginning. That works as well. Uh, anyway, um, so we need to take these words, these ideas, and put them into our own words, as I say, as though I'm explaining them to you or as though you're explaining them to me. So the first one we underlined was up here, hated their good neighbours and the dog Shiro, and that's here in our table. So here I've taken that and I've translated that. Hated their good neighbours and the dog Shiro. So hated is the key word here. So I've turned that into dislike. Yeah, maybe it isn't as strong, but it conveys the same idea and shows understanding. Their good neighbours. Okay, so the good couple. I know I've got good, I suppose, maybe we could say the other couple or the old couple. Um, but the main thing is I've shown I understand that the neighbours are the couple with whom we started the story. And the dog Shiro and Shiro. So I've got a phrase that has the same meaning but shows some understanding. Hated their good neighbours and the dog Shiro, we can write as dislike the good couple and Shiro. Now, what have I changed here? You may notice that I've gone from the past tense here to the present tense here. You don't need to do that. The reason I've done that is because it's a good rule of thumb to get used to that you answer a question in the same tense so the same verb tense, past or present, as the question. The question says, explain how we know that the neighbours are wicked and cruel, which is in the present tense, now. So I've changed the past tense, hated, into the present tense, dislike. You don't need to do that. You can keep it in the past if you want to. I'm just explaining why it isn't the same, so you don't think I've made a mistake. Happened to look into their kitchen. Okay, so this is the kind of phrase that is a little bit old-fashioned. You probably wouldn't express it like that. So what's the key thing here? So I've written on the right, comes to their house. Now you may say that doesn't convey the idea of a kitchen. That's because the kitchen is not important. What matters here is that Shiro just turns up at their house, doesn't do anything particularly problematic, and they beat him up, which is horrible, okay? So the kitchen thing doesn't matter. I'm showing that I understand what matters, which is simply that Shiro comes to their house and they, Kicked him, how can I put that on my own words? Well, what matters is that they attack him. It doesn't really matter whether they kick him or punch him. The crucial thing is that they attack him. So hence I've got attack Shiro on the right here. Threw something at him. Again, I'm moving into the present, that's hurling. So threw something at him. I've just put it in different words, even hurling things at him. So I've shown that there's a real aggression here. Wounding him, what does wounding me, him mean? Well, if I, um, what would the difference be here? So if I you know, gave you a slap, not that I would do such a thing, that wouldn't really be wounding. It would be, be an assault, but I wouldn't wound you. Wounding implies some kind of, it implies a permanent injury, and I think it implies that I've broken the skin, I've cut you or something. Um, so certainly something quite nasty, and so I put, I hurt him very badly. If you've got a wound, I think you imagine, so you imagine some kind of incision, some kind of laceration or puncture, wound. Um, so now we've got all the main ideas here 
translated into our own words. Some words from the text are still there, like good, but the key thing is that all the ideas, I show clear understanding of all the ideas. And then the last stage is I need to stick things, these things together, link them in a way that's logical. So you see all these phrases on the right, see how they turn up in my answer here, underlined. They dislike the good couple and Shiro. They attack Shiro, even hurling things at him when he comes to their house. Sometimes they hurt him very badly. So it's a simple answer. It definitely includes all the key points from the text but it shows understanding by putting them into my own phrasing. I think there are certainly ways that could be improved, but it's, it's a decent answer. I also included, I'll just talk about it now because it's here, this example down here of a bad answer. So this just takes the phrase from the question, wicked and cruel, so it's just circular. It says we know they're wicked and cruel because they're wicked and cruel. That wouldn't get any marks at all because it just repeats the question and it quotes rather than using my own words. So it's bad from two points of view. So that's what's going on here. That's what you need to do with a question like question seven. When you've got a question that says own words, underline own words, really focus on that phrase and think about this process. And as I've mentioned, you won't draw a table like that in an exam. You won't have time. But once you practice that way of thinking and you're good at it, you'll be able to do it without copying out the text, without drawing tables or anything like that. But to start with, you might find that a useful technique when you're working without time limits. OK, so we filled in question seven um, because I've talked through my example answer. Let's move on to question eight. Let's have a look in the comments and see what's happening here. Um, so lots of people giving their example answers. Um, yeah, some great examples here. Uh, the neighbors dislike Shira and the perfectly good couple. This is from Tinawala. Even if he just stepped into their house, they would attack him and they injured him very badly. That looks really good. Um, uh, Maha then was quite wicked because they find joy assaulting and attacking Shiro for the mere mistake of peering into their kitchen. They clearly dislike their two neighbours, or their neighbours, I think the two is just a typo there. Um, uh, do, 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 is there anything missing there? Um, do, 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 no, I think that's pretty good. I think that's a good answer. Well done. Um, I, I know there are often English mistakes in these comments, but I understand you're just sort of throwing them out quickly during the lesson, so I'm not so critical about that most of the time. Um, yeah, lots of good answers here. Really good. I'm not going to go for everybody's because we want to keep mushing on. Mushing on? Why am I saying that? Pushing on. Um, I said mush for merch, and I'm saying mushing instead of pushing. What, what am I on about? What am I, what am I ever on about? Uh, okay, question eight. Explain why the old man thinks that the birds are attacking the corn. Line 26. So let's go into the text and have a look. Hallelujah, that's working. So... One day, let's read from just before line 25. One day, Shiro was heard barking for a long time in the field at the back of his master's house. The old man, thinking that perhaps some birds were attacking the corn, hurried out to see what was the matter. Okay, so um, one day Shiro was heard barking. So the Shiro barks and the old man runs out and thinks some birds are attacking the corn. So is the answer to the question just because Shiro was barking? It is only a one mark question. Well, let's think about that. Let's write that down first of all. Um, so uh, I could say because, but let's be a little formal, a bit more formal. This um, is is because it says thinks in the question present tense. This is because, oops, Shiro should be a capital letter. It's his name. Shiro is barking. Okay, but let's think about this again. If Shiro was barking outside the front door, would the, would the old man think, oh, there are dogs, um, there are birds in the field? No, maybe you'd think the postman's here. If Shiro was barking in the hallway at night, the old man might think, there's a burglar. Barking can mean lots of things. What makes the old man think that there are birds attacking the corn? Let's look back at the text. One day Shiro was heard barking in the field. That's the key thing, the fact that Shiro is barking in the field. What might happen in the field to make Shiro bark? Birds coming and stealing the grain, okay? So that's key information here. I can't be certain of the one mark by putting, from put, by putting, yeah, by putting, because Shiro is barking. Maybe, maybe half a mark. To be certain, I'm gonna write, this is because Shiro is barking in the field. 
Okay, and I've definitely got enough. And it's fine, there's a quotation here. It's exactly the right quotation. It's in quotation marks. Don't make the mistake of writing this down without quotation marks. If you've taken the same words as the text, you must use quotation marks, because otherwise it's as though you're trying to pretend that it's your own idea rather than something from the passage. Um, just be honest about it. If you find that almost your whole answer is from the passage and you have to put it all in quotation marks and you feel bad about that, well, you should. Um, that should be a sign for you that you maybe need to trim your, trim your quotation down and just choose the most relevant part. Okay, on to question nine. Um, I'm trying to power through a bit this week. Bit this week. I think I d dillied and dallied a bit too much last time and it dragged on a bit. I'm trying to keep things moving. Explain what is meant by industriously in line 29. So let's assume that you do not know what this word means. Okay, If you know what the word means, it's easy. But let's imagine that you don't. Line 29. So we're down here. First of all, we find it and we underline. Oops, I'm crossing it out. Let's not do that. Let's underline it instead. There we are. So here he began to dig very industriously with his paws, yelping with joy all the time. Okay, so we can already rule some things out. He certainly wasn't digging very in a very bored way. He wasn't digging slowly. That would none of this would fit with yelping with joy. Let's go back a bit. He ran to meet his master, wagging his tail, seizing the end of his kimono, dragged his master over to a large enoki tree. I don't know what a enoki tree is, but I should look it up. Um, um, Maybe it's very beautiful. Anyway, um, he began to dig very industriously. Um, okay, so he's so enthusiastic. He's dragged his master here. He wants to show him something. He wants to show him something. So it's not going to mean, as I say, slowly, apathetically, anything like that. So there's always this good test you can do of covering up the word. You know, put your thumb over it or something, and thinking what might fit there. So he began to dig very enthusiastically energetically okay any of these things might work determinedly all of these things would make sense so you can have a pretty good guess those words are pretty similar so what should i put down i don't know um yeah something like energetically determinedly um so it doesn't say write down the meaning of so it's probably good to write a full sentence but a full sentence could be something very simple oh actually sorry i need to go back to my Laptop share, that's the one. Um, so it means, um, yeah, determinedly. God, sorry, my handwriting. I'm writing on a shiny laptop screen, it's slippy. What can I say with my kind of, with my special electronic pen? Um, it's uh, not the easiest thing in the world, but I do have terrible handwriting anyway, so, you know, excuses, excuses. Right. Something else for me to say about this, but I'll come back to it after the next part, I think. Uh, any, any similar answer, um, it means um, determinedly, it means energetically, enthusiastically, anything like that should be fine. Uh, so, yep, Frank writing enthusiastically, absolutely fine. Um, Nadia, you said hard working. Um, I think you probably get that um, because he was working hard. So I'll come back to that, okay? I'll look at the next one. Bewilderment, line 31. Let's have a look at line 31. Okay, it's the end of the text. Stood looking on in bewilderment, okay. The old man, unable to understand what it all meant, stood looking on in bewilderment. Okay, let's say you've no idea what this means. The old man, unable to understand. So he doesn't know why Shira is doing this. So he looks on in bewilderment. Your dog has dragged you over somewhere, imagine that, and then starts digging frantically, being really excited, but you've no idea why. How are you going to look at it if you're standing there looking at it? Confusion, puzzlement, okay? Stood looking on in Okay, test for you. I'm about to write a wrong answer. Why is this answer wrong? Uh, someone who can put this, oh, someone's put the, um, um, oh no, no, is there anyone who's put the wrong answer? Um, yes, okay. <gasps> right, so I'm gonna write a wrong answer now. And if you've written this in the comments, maybe you can write, you can tell me why this is incorrect. So it means, it doesn't, it means, 
confused. What is wrong with that? Okay, can anyone... Oh, someone's written confusing. That is also wrong. Can someone tell me why this is incorrect? It means confused. Oh, Frank says I'm a girl. My apologies. Um, lots of people uh, comment under their parents' login names, so this kind of confusion often happens. Um, someone says it's not from the text. That isn't right because we have to explain what it means. So of course, we have to use the word not from the text. Uh, Tony Cotton, well done. Uh, Tony, you have won a pen. So uh, send me a message through the website after this uh, with your address and postcode, and I will make sure that um, an easy 11 plus pen to you. His pen is sent to you because you were the first person there. Tony has written wrong word type. Tony's actually actually written wrong word type, but I think typos are allowed in instant chat comments. Yes, it is the wrong word type. Bewilderment in line 31 is a noun. He stood looking on in bewilderment, in confusion. If you write confused, you've written an adjective. And a noun can't mean an adjective. It doesn't make sense. Okay? Um, it's a bit like if I wrote determined for part A. Uh, so someone wrote, uh, what did they put? They put, oh yeah, hard working. So hard working is an adjective phrase, the hard working dog. It isn't an adverb like industriously. So you can probably get away with it, but really borderline. If you write um, confused here, you're just plain wrong because confused is an adjective and bewilderment is a noun. It's a, it's a kind, it's an idea, it's a thing, the bewilderment, okay? So it means confusion. And now you're there, now you've got a correct answer. So confusing is wrong in the same way. Um, do, 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 do. Maha says, you're just saying confused and you aren't explaining. Um, I think I am explaining um, that confused is an adjective, the confused person. Um, I feel confusion, that's a noun, it's a different part of speech. Um, I do a blah, 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 blah. Um, how else can I illustrate the difference? Um, the do, 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 oh, sorry, I don't know what I'm on about. Yeah, the coffee is hot. Can you feel the heat? Okay, so hot is an adjective, it describes the coffee, the hot coffee. Can you feel the heat? Now, heat has got the in front of it. Heat is actually a thing. I'm asking whether you can feel it. Okay, I couldn't say, can I wouldn't say, can you feel the hot? Because that would be nonsense. It would be gibberish. Okay, hot and heat. Hot is an adjective. Heat is a noun. Um, so like this, uh, do, do other people like the like the Moomin Trolls? I really like the Moomin Trolls. I think they're wonderful. Moominland Midwinter is one of my favourite books. Really beautiful book. Um, anyway. So here we are, it means confusion. Really important that you get parts of speech right when you're explaining the meanings of words. Right, onwards, what we've got in the comments here. Um, uh, no, people writing confused is a feeling and not an emotion that can be displayed to someone's face. Uh, no, that isn't the point. Uh, you're actually wrong. Confusion is a feeling. Confused isn't a feeling, it's an adjective. So I'm afraid you've made the same mistake again in your comments there. Um, uh, a couple of people wrote the same comments there. It's a strange thing that people copy each other's comments and then paste them to try and get credit. Um, strange. Young people on the internet don't understand them at all. It's funny when you copy a wrong comment and try and get credit for that. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, question 10. Who is stronger, Shiro or his master? Explain your answer using evidence from the final paragraph. Okay, so we need to go into the final paragraph to find evidence to do with somebody being stronger. So let's have a look through. One day Shiro was head barking for blah, blah, blah. We'd done that. The old man thinking, but, but how he'd out to see what was the matter. Nothing there about strength. As soon as Shiro saw his master, he ran to meet him, wagging his tail and seizing the end of his kimono. So his kimono is what he's wearing. Um, dragged him under a large yenoki tree. So Shiro seized the end of his kimono. It's a very strong word. And he drags him. <clears throat> Now, what does drag imply? It implies resistance, right? If the master said, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll come with you, he wouldn't need to be dragged. So this word suggests that the master was trying to resist and not follow, and Shira said, no, you are coming, and he succeeded in pulling him over. And that implies, even if it doesn't absolutely prove it, 
strongly implies that Shiro is stronger, more powerful than his master. Okay? So, that seems to fit. Let's read on. He began to dig very industriously, yelping with joy. The old man, unable to understand what it meant, stood looking on. But Shiro went on barking and digging with all his might. So you could say that Shiro digs with all his might while his master just looks on. But I don't think that really proves that Shiro is stronger. Because the main reason that Shiro is digging and his master isn't is that Shiro has found something and wants to show his master. And his master doesn't know why Shiro is digging. So that's really what's happening there. The key thing here, the only thing that really shows a strength difference is that Shiro can drag his master over, which implies that his master is resisting, okay? So um, that's what we need to use. And the key thing here is the word dragged. By the way, it talks about the master's kimono here. Anyone who's eagle-eyed and there's a little bit about clothing will notice that in the picture, Shiro's master is not wearing a kimono. Uh, so there's a little bit of an inconsistency there. Um, but I don't think you need to worry about that too much. Okay, so. Uh, who is stronger, Shiro or his master? Oops. So we have to do two things. We have to answer the question correctly and we have to explain it. Oh, and we have to use evidence. So we need a quote. The key word, pretty clear, is dragged, which we can change to drag if we want. We've just changed the time of the verb from the past in the passage to our presence. Um, that's fine. Um, so uh, we just need to write a simple answer. Shiro is stronger. Okay, so we've got the answer there. Because he can, now we're going to use the evidence, drag his master um, possibly against his will, just to really make the point clear. His is a bit of a problem because his could be Shiro, so possibly against uh, the human's will or the man's will. To make it clear that it isn't against Shiro's will, that wouldn't really make sense. Shiro is stronger because he can drag, as a quotation, his master possibly against the man's will. Notice how I can use evidence from the passage so easily just in one word with quotation marks around it. Okay, drag. So succinct. Oops. Um, and that does that job because that's me doing the explaining. Really important. Whoopsie days. Oh, come on, grab out. There we are. Um, and I've answered the question when I say Shiro is stronger at the start. So I've only used two of the three lines available, but I've really convincingly answered the question. I've even added something extra, possibly against the man's will, that probably doesn't have to be there, but makes absolutely certain that I can't miss these marks. From the passage, write down an adjective and an adverb, okay? Um, this should be pretty easy. Oh, I just want to comment on some, yeah, some answers in the comments. So, um, Maha says, Shira is stronger because an old person's body is frail and weaker and this dog is strong and energetic. The exact opposite of the target. Shira can drag the master and is strong and young. Okay, so, um, you got there in the end. Shira can drag the master. That's the key thing. That's what you need to explain. The first part, is not relevant. If you just wrote the first part, I'm afraid you wouldn't get marks for that. So, Shira is stronger because an old person's body is frailer and weaker. That isn't comprehension. That's your own knowledge, your own assumption. It doesn't really stand up anyway because let's say that Shira was like was a little chihuahua, a little handbag dog. Then even if his master was really old and frail, you still wouldn't say that Shira was stronger um, or powerful. Um, so. And then the other thing is there are plenty of old people who, um, I mean, there are old people who run up mountains, for heaven's sakes. You know, you can't generalise, um, especially nowadays when so many people say so fit until old age. But anyway, um, yeah, it doesn't quite hang together. You need to talk about the text here, and that's what you do at the end. By the way, the thargic doesn't say anything about whether you're strong. The thargic is sort of lazy, slow-moving, um, sort of dopey. You could be really strong and powerful, but be lethargic. Uh, so that is kind of neither here nor there. Um, but you do get there in the end, and the last part of your answer is good. So well done, well done for that. Uh, yeah, bah, 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 bah. Um, yeah, lots of people who basically said the same things. It's good. Well done. Everyone seems to understand. Um, uh, someone's asking what the answers to question nine were. You can always rewind the video. Uh, look, here you are quickly.
Uh, also, there are answers in the worksheet if you scroll down. So if you download the worksheet, you can actually find the answers this week after the questions. Okay, from the passage right down. I should say, by the way, that for question 9, there are other ways you could put it. You don't have to have the exact same thing that I put. Question 11 from the passage right down, an adjective and an adverb. Let's have a look at the passage and see what we can find. So what are we looking for? It's always a good idea to have an idea. It's always a good idea to have an idea, obviously, I guess. We need to know what we're looking for. So an adjective, we've spoken about this already, it describes a noun. So I said, for example, the hot coffee and hot, it's not hot anymore, it's got cold, unfortunately, but anyway, uh, the hot coffee, hot is an adjective describing the coffee. Uh, an adverb is um, describing how something happens. It's a verb describing words. So to be honest, there are lots of things that you might call, ad lots of things are called adverbs, but the most obvious examples are Lee words. Um, so, you know, he ran energetically, energetically describing how he ran. Um, there are some without Lee, so for example, um, uh, she performed well in the test. How did she perform? She performed well. Well is an adverb there. And there are lots of other things that are adverbs, but these are the kind of really obvious ones we can look for. So let's look for adjectives and adverbs. We need one of each. Um, so, do, do, do. Um, Actually, we're start, starting off with, but let's go for some, let's see if we look at some really obvious examples to make things simple. Their life had been a very happy and peaceful one. Okay, clearly adjectives. So it, it was a peaceful life. What kind of life was it? It was a peaceful life, a peaceful dog. I'm enjoying a peaceful coffee. I certainly am not. I'm shouting into a microphone, but anyway. Um, so that's an adjective. That's great. We can use that one. And let's go on. Let's look for clear adverbs. I mean, to be honest, there's some adverbs in here that are less obvious, but I just want to focus on what's really obvious that you can use. Oh, look, we've already underlined one down here industriously ends with Lee. So that's a really clear one for us to use. How did he dig? He dug industriously. Okay, so that's an adverb that we can use. You're not repeating an answer here, by the way. Industriously was in a question before. Nothing wrong at all with using it again here. An adjective, what did we say? Uh, so I'm just going to cheat and check the passage again without showing you. For simplicity, it was peaceful, wasn't it? Uh, so an ad adjective was peaceful. And an adverb, industriously. Right, and the final question here, and this is a continue the passage question. Now, if I do these properly and talk through them in detail, they take a long time um, when I take these creative writing tasks. Um, I know that will be the case if I now write an answer to this from scratch. So I'm not going to do that, but I don't want to sell you, sell you short either. So I thought, how can I deal with this question quickly but without skipping it? And I thought, I'll do what I did, I'll do what I did for question seven. Um, I will show you the example answer that I wrote in the solution to this paper and I'll just talk about some of the key points from it for you to take away. If you really want to um, practice these story continuation tasks, then um, have a look at which one is it? One of my RSL creative writing books. Oh, is it book two or book three? I think it's book two, uh, but you should own all of them, of course. I think it's book two. It's the one with the chapter about the time machine where you have to continue that. Where well, I go into this in depth. There's also at least one video about this on my channel. Go to the Easy 11 Plus page, look at the creative writing playlist, and there's at least one video about continuing a story. So I, I really show the process from start to finish there and actually do one with you. Um, here I'm going to show you one that I made earlier. Before I do, notice some important things in the question. Taking some ideas from the picture, okay? So this is not just a continue the story question. This is a write the next paragraph using ideas from the picture to inspire you, not just from the text. Also notice write the next paragraph. So here are some important things to bear in mind. One, do not write two or three paragraphs because then you are not writing the next paragraph. Um, at the very least, it will annoy the marker. It might lose you some marks. You don't have to do that. Just do always do exactly what the question says. Um, Secondly, it does not say finish the story, okay? These questions almost never do. Do not think that, in fact, this is such an important point that I'm going to zoom out to the big camera, right? Do not think when you have a continue the passage question that you need to finish the story, that you need to wrap things up and send everyone a happily ever after. In fact, do not try to do that. It is always a disaster. You just need to write the next bit well. That is it. That is all that you need to do. 
If you try to tie up all the plot threads, you will make it pretty much impossible to write well, include good description, include interesting details. It'll be a disaster. You'll lose loads of marks. Do not try and finish the story. Right, OK. Back into our task. So as I said, what I'm going to do is have a look at my example answer for this. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Scroll, 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 scroll. OK. So here's what I came up with here. Um, fact, I'm going to try and be too clever by half. Um, bum, 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 bum. Right, I've got the example answer in two places. So I can show you in more than one way. Uh, maybe become useful later. So let's look through this and just talk about it. Um, so let's start off by going back to the text, actually. Oh, no, what have I done? I've just made a poor choice. So many poor choices. Let's go back to the text and just remind ourselves how it finished, because it's really important that your continuation continues. So they're in the um, in the field, and Shiro is digging, and the old man doesn't understand, and is looking puzzled, but Shiro keeps barking, I'm digging, really excited about something that he knows or believes is down there. Let's look at the picture, because we have to use details from the picture. So you can see the old man there digging with a kind of, it looks a bit like a hoe, but it's not got a shovel. Shiro is looking on. And what do we see behind? We see what is we see somebody peering between these reeds, spying on them. And I think it's fair to guess that that is um, one of the neighbours. Okay. So how do we continue? Bashir went on barking and digging with all his might. What happens next? Okay. So you can plunge in and just say what happens next, or you can be descriptive. Let's see. So I've written all of a sudden. Shiro yelped and pulled back, licking his paw sheepishly. OK, so I've got a bit of action here, but I'm holding back saying what happened. So I don't want to say, then they found a big stash of buried treasure. Because that doesn't build any suspense and it doesn't really show any skill from the writer either. All of a sudden, Shiro yelped and pulled back, licking his paw sheepishly. So there's some detailed description that helps you to imagine a dog in a very doggy way yelping but licking the paw but there's also a bit of characterization what kind of a dog is this this is a dog who when something happens that makes him look less than impressive um is a little bit embarrassed about it it's implied by the word sheepishly the old man knelt beside the hole the smell of fresh earth in his nose so notice that I'm doing something I'm always encouraging people to do in their creative writing, which is using the five senses so that the reader can imagine that they're there. The smell of fresh earth is something everyone can imagine what that smell is like. And it helps us to really imagine ourselves next to this hole, the, the earth's all being turned over, and there's this sort of slight sort of loamy smell. Um, and, um, and yeah, we imagine ourselves as the old man, basically. Uh, it's also setting the scene a bit. The old man is kneeling there. Shiro has pulled back and is looking his poor. So it's a, it's a scene in transition. The characters are moving around. We can see that. Something hard was poking through the soil. Something hard. I haven't said what it is. I haven't yet said what it looks like. Because the first thought for the old man is there is something hard poking through the soil. And then as he looks at it, he'll have more thoughts about it. And so will we. So our thought process is following his. It had a cool, smooth surface. So what I don't say is, the old man reached out his hand and felt it. But you know that from the fact it says it had a cool, smooth surface. So by using a sensory image like that, in other words, using one of the five senses here, touch, I am telling you something about what happened without telling you. I've skipped the sentence that says, the old man reached out and touched it. But you know that happened from the description, because how else would he feel it? It's a little which flickered in the early morning light. Okay, so that's also creating atmosphere by reminding us of the time of day. Um, and um, yeah, I don't, the text doesn't tell us, but I've, I've but we don't know that it wasn't early morning. So I've imagined that detail, and again, it gives us a bit, gives us a bit of atmosphere. The light's kind of fresh, not not full yet but quite, quite low in the sky and reflecting off this thing. Taking a, tool from by, taking a tool from by the fence. So now I am using a detail from the picture, okay? So we can see the tool here that the old man is carrying in the picture. Tool from by the fence. The man slowly pries into view a little silver box. Okay, a little silver box, just simple. 
as he patted the dust from its lid. So patted, I think, is a nice verb. Pat, 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 pat. It made a hollow, dull sound. Okay, so a very specific sound. So I'm still working the senses with lots of, you know, lots of variety here. Made a hollow, dull sound. What if I could invite to a hollow? Can I illustrate this to you? Uh, no, I can't see anything to do that. Never mind, you know what this means. Um, so a dull sound, it isn't a kind of lively kind of sound. Actually, that, oh, it doesn't matter. Whatever. It's a, um, yeah, it's not like a, it's not like a, it's more a dull sound like, can you hear that? The difference? Um, Shiro, who had forgotten his bruised paw, was staring. Okay, so, don't, so I'm taking an idea that I used before and referring back to it. So he hurt his paw, now he's forgotten his paw. So I'm linking this together from my piece of writing. And now I'm pulling in the other important detail from the picture. Neither of them noticed their neighbour's face, twisted with glee, clearing, peering through the parted corn. So the picture, we can't actually tell that the neighbour's face is twisted with glee. It isn't clear enough for that. But I've imagined that detail, because what might they be thinking? Maybe glee, maybe they think, ah, they found this thing, now it can be mine. Mine or mine. So I'm imagining that kind of reaction. Um, twisted with glee. So if you had said his face full of glee, that might be a nice, happy thing like this. But it's twisted because he's evil doing my best to kind of go on there. Um, so the word twisted there is really, really important. Um, okay, um, peering through the parted corn, maybe that's the pa, pa, pa of the digging. I don't know, but it kind of creates kind of mystery, that slight sort of alliteration of peas, maybe. Notice their neighbour, no, no, maybe a little bit sneaky. So a little alliteration here, you can interpret them as you want, they aren't big strong alliterations. Um, lots of senses in here, as I mentioned. I've really focused on trying to use good verbs that are really descriptive. Uh, yelped, um, doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, flickered, prized, patted, um, that kind of thing, peering. Uh, so these really, really specific verbs help you to imagine exactly what's going on. And details from the, it continues the text naturally with the same characters. There are details from the picture. So I'm just trying to do everything that the question wants me to do without making it too complicated. If the question asks you to do something like take ideas from the picture, of course that gives you a lot of freedom in what you choose. However, if you wrote an answer to this that didn't mention something really obvious and important, like, for example, that somebody is peering through these reeds or the corn or whatever it is, then you would strongly risk losing at least a mark because it implies you haven't really thought about the picture. So just bear that kind of thing in mind. There are so many answers you could write to this. They certainly don't need to be the same as mine. I just wanted to give you an illustration of how it might work without going on too much. I think that will do fine. I am um, I want to wrap this up, not too late. So rather than looking at your answers to this in the quick comments, apologies, I'm gonna move on. But if you think your answer is really good, then edit it, make sure the grammar is excellent, the spelling is good, and then post it in one of the comments underneath the video later, and I'll have a look at it there. Uh, okay, so it's time for the... Oh yes, the tip of the week. I'm kind of going to repeat something I've already said today, actually, because I think it's so important. The reason this comes to mind is because I've had quite a few people sending me their comprehensions to Mark, people who are 11 plus Lifeline me members and want my voice marking um, this week. And it's something I've noticed so often that I thought I should just come back and remind you all about it. And it's something so simple. When you have written your answer, whether it's comprehension, whether it's maths, even, this bit of, even if it's an answer to a writing question, check the question again and make sure that you have done exactly what it asks, okay? It is that simple, it makes a difference between passing and failing the exam for so many people. I mean, look at these questions that we've been looking at. We scroll back up to the questions. Um, we looked at this kind of thing. If it says, use your own words, here, use your own words, and you include a load of quotations from the text, you are going to lose a load of marks because you have not used your own words. You have not shown understanding. Question six says, what do you think it means? Explain how the ideas in the passage support your answer. If you do not explain, you will not get all the marks. If your answer is not based on the passage, you will not get all the marks. You need to check the question after you've written your answer to make sure. 
it, it will amaze you when you start doing this how many mistakes you pick up on that otherwise you would have lost marks for. It's just a center. I could go through all the questions here and give examples. Um, it's so important that you check the question after writing your answer to make sure that you have done exactly what it says, everything that it says, and have not gone off, gone off on one and done something else. I know a load of you will still make the same mistake, but I tried. At least admit that I tried. Right, okay, I'm gonna wrap up very soon, but first of all, I'm going to take a few of your questions. So, back to my main view. Good, and the stream hasn't broken today. I'm still here, your comments are still here. We haven't all disappeared. Some things are going right. Um, okay, any questions coming in? Rohan has written, Robert, Rohan. Um, Frank, who is not Frank, but is in fact female, unless it's uh, um, unless it's a woman called Frank, says, Robert, this is my first time, not on the guest account, please can I have a shout out? It means so much to me, I'm called Carl called Carl. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, uh, Carl, a shout out. Uh, but have you got any questions here? Don't all ask for shout outs, please. I want to answer questions. Okay, Marsh, an excellent question. Brilliant. Uh, thank you for this. In comprehension, if you get a, if you make a grammatical or punctuation mistake, do you get marks taken away? It depends, is the answer. So an excellent question, a less excellent answer. Normally, probably not. Basic rule I would apply in most cases. If the mistakes that you make don't stop the marker from fully understanding what you've written, then you will probably be okay. So unlikely to be a problem. If your mistakes start annoying the marker, that's when it can start to make a difference. Um, I mean, I read an answer from somebody who'd submitted something for me to mark earlier today, and they'd written a whole answer a whole paragraph answer without any full stops. It was just one sentence that made no sense as a piece of English. I took a mark off because it was just kind of lazy. They hadn't bothered to present it to me in a way that uh, would be easy for me to mark. And I think if I was an examiner in that situation, I would be tempted to start taking a mark off because I say this is somebody who lacks the ability to express themselves well in English, which is part of what you're testing in an English exam. So normally if the examiner can understand probably won't affect it but there may be our limits more importantly as soon as you're reading something you probably know this as well and there are lots of mistakes in it you start noticing the mistakes and you start not noticing some of the good things that they are saying so even on that level it can cost you marks just because you distract the examiner from your good points by including mistakes also, comprehensions often include questions like the last question here, which was a creative writing question, the continue the story question. And when you get a question like that, immediately they will be marking your grammar and your spelling. And so these things will matter in that context. So not a simple answer, but I hope that covers it uh, pretty well for you. Thank you for the question, a really good one. Uh, is there a video on dialogue? Have I done a video on dialogue? I don't think I have done yet, um, but I will at some point. Um, Sorry, I can't answer all questions. I was looking for particularly useful things. Is it okay if you underline keywords in your answers? Um, nothing wrong with that. I don't think it would do you any harm, but I probably wouldn't. It doesn't really make any difference. The examiner is going to be reading your answer. If your answer is so vague that they can't work out where the keywords are, you've got a problem anyway, whether or not you underline. And I mean, they will know what they're marking. What happens if what they think is key is different? From, just don't bother, don't bother with it. It's probably just a waste of your time. Uh, oh, my light's just gone out. Uh, one of them, oh, never mind. Um, Lee Gore says, my name is Emily. Hello, Emily. Um, Marie says, in comprehension, is the picture accurate? I don't know what that question means. Uh, sorry, feel free to re-ask it. Um, Nadia says, how long should I study? I, the kind of, I get variations of this question all the time. You should study an amount that allows you to learn most effectively, um, which is not going to mean for as much time as possible, because if you're anything like me, there's a period of time, you study for a certain period of time and then your brain just stops processing right and you would be better off having a break, clearing your brain, doing something else that you enjoy. Um, you need to judge how much studying is effective for you, but it should be based on how you work effectively and not based on what the next person does. That's what's important. Ash, can I get a pen, please? I need to add the pens to the website, actually, to buy. Thank you for the reminder. Um, people in this channel get pens for really good contributions. 
Um, and they don't need to be live. You can also write really good contributions in the comments underneath. Uh, comment, really good contributions aren't always uh, answers to questions that I've covered. They can also be really interesting questions. They can also be really good advice for other people. Uh, there are all sorts of ways you can contribute and earn a bit of merch. Um, how do we solve evidence questions? But the evidence is very little or is well hidden. Tips for inference. People often say, can you give me tips for inference? And my answer is, look for my comprehension videos and there are lots of inference questions covered there. I've just done a comprehension lesson. I'm not gonna start a new one now at this point. It's not fair to people who want to ask other questions. It would take ages. Dude shop. Do all independent schools include creative writing? No, uh, not all independent schools do, but it's very common. Um, to do. Harley says, when is the pen arriving? Oh yeah, you went a pen for a really good comment. Um, the pen um, is has been posted. It will arrive soon, I imagine. Uh, it's just in a normal second class envelope, so it'll get to you when it gets to you, probably within the next day or two. Uh, when are the pencil cases coming? Oh, the pencil cases. Uh, I just got an email from the um, printer saying, oh, we're, we're thinking of printing them now. They were due to be delivered a week ago. So I don't know, sometime, hopefully in your lifetime, they will arrive. Uh, do do, um, uh, uh, please stop asking how do we solve X question style of things. Um, have a look at my channel and watch a video about that topic. A bit more general stuff now. I have an exam extremely soon. Do you have any tips? Yes, loads. Watch the videos on my channel. Uh -huh. um, is reading a book the best way to do vocab? Question from Penny. It's another question I get a lot, but that doesn't, that's because it's an important question. Um, reading a book is probably the best way to do vocab if you make an active effort to learn the vocab from it. If you read a book and just go, oh look, that's a new word, that's interesting, and then move on, you probably won't learn it until you've read it about a hundred times. I mean, really, most people don't really learn vocab like that. You learn the vocab if you come across the new word in the book, think that is interesting, write it down, and then find opportunities to use it. And that's how you learn it. Uh, so if you want to learn vocab, that's what you should do. Basically, using it can mean all kinds of things. It can mean talking to people. It can mean using it in your stories. It can mean using it in your comprehension answers. Uh, and that's how it will sink in. Um, just a word of warning, if you, use a if you use a word in a situation that doesn't really fit, just to practice it, um, if you do that in a marked piece of work, that can actually end up using, losing you marks. So practice using new words, but be careful what you do when you're actually in exams and so on. In that situation, try to use the best words, not just the new words. About to finish here, um, can you do a lesson, lesson, lesson on ratios, proportion rates? There's lots of stuff in my maths on those topics, even when they aren't labelled as ratio and proportion. So do have a look through. Like, for example, there's a video called How Many Roberts, uh, which has got lots of pictures on me on the cover. Yeah, you look in the maths playlists in um, on the channel homepage, and that's all about ratio problems, um, even if it isn't called ratios, for example. Um, one more, One more question. Um, Zoe says, how many compressions do you do? Uh, look at me compressing myself. Uh, comprehensions, comprehensions, you mean comprehensions. It's probably a autocorrect on your computer or phone, to be fair. I'm just being nasty. Uh, I just love it when people say compression instead of comprehension. I imagine people being squeezed, compressed. Compression, doesn't sound good. Um, how many do I have? Oh, I've got gazillions of comprehensions. Uh, if you think between my, so I've got like, what have I got? I've got this book, which is my sort of pre-11 plus book called 8 plus to 10 plus comprehension. I've got two uh, books for 11 plus written comprehension. I've got two books for 11 plus multiple choice comprehension. I've got a book for 13 plus comprehension. And then I've got literally dozens and dozens of them in 11 plus lifeline. So I have got, whoa, I've got a terrifying number of comprehension exercises. Uh, have a look at the links in the video description and you can start to explore this delightful cornucopia of comprehension exercises. Um, God, that does make me feel like it's time for some compression. Um, yeah, good question. Thank you. If you mean my videos, have a look at the Easy 11 Plus channel homepage, and there are loads and loads of comprehension videos there. Right, people, I can see there are people starting to log off, which tells me everything I need to know about the fact that you've had enough. So have I. I'm going to have my dinner. It's been wonderful to have you here. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, oh, let's go to the music version so you can have a nice play out. Don't log off yet, people. Wait. Let me say goodbye, please. Um, explore the links in the video description and please invite your friends along to, to watch these Easy 11 Plus live lessons. They're every Tuesday evening at six o'clock on this channel. Why would you do anything else? If you're re-watching this, click on this video next to continue your learning. Bye-bye.